That is right, folks. You can finally stop asking when the tier list is coming because I am here bringing it to your very homes, apparently. Hello, folks. Apologies for how late question mark this is, or is it? Because as some of you may know, this meta, set 21, is actually the first one in, I think, the history of Zero that we've had one set last for two months. Now, they have shaken it up a little bit by dropping a bunch of buffs as well for the second month, but a lot of these buffs, like some of them actually do feel kind of impactful. Some decks do come up more than others, but at the same time, some of them don't feel as impactful. So I've only included a few decks in here that do get impacted by those. There are some cards like Chaos that felt like it would make a big impact, but a lot of people just like run it as their heal or just like don't play it at all, just keep playing Blaster Joker and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to gauge that might develop more over the month. So because it's kind of early in September after these buffs have dropped, like also the Japanese tier lists haven't really reflected on them yet either. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, let's talk about the tier list. Talk about like obviously set 21. Also, we had the big Vanguard Championship, Vanguard Zero Championship summer happen as well, which kind of showed us what the popular decks are, what the best decks are. And so I think that will really help to kind of like paint the picture of what this meta really is and what the best decks are. Like look out, there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to put into the highly competitive category because I think there is so much stuff that has potential, but it isn't as good as the things at the very top, but you can still bring them into ranked like easily and climb with them smoothly, like no problem whatsoever, right? And then there's also quite a lot of decks that are like high effort that you can definitely win with as, as well, but you have to put in the time for them, right? Like I'm talking about stuff like like Tachikaze, right? Like Tachikaze, in my opinion, is a deck that like I've seen people put in a lot of effort with and top, like literally in, in tournaments and stuff like that, or Angel Feather or Great Nature, like those kind of decks, they're still very good, but it's like those two categories, I think today that you should look out for because these are all decks that you can easily climb with and like go to the top with that aren't necessarily considered like the top meta, but they're still really, really good. As always, let's take a look at the game with tier list first. So this is one of the Japanese websites that we'd like to use to kind of, you know, assess their opinion. I don't think they've updated with the actual buffs. I think this, no, they'll say it was updated on the 3rd of September, but I don't think they included the buffs in this because it feels like it's just the, the decks from set 21. So we have uh, Brawlers and Perditions and at tier one, which I definitely agree with. These both both of these decks are really good. I would maybe even say like it depends on the skill level of the opponent how good these decks are. Then tier two, we have Seekers with Exiv, Jewel Knights, Deleters, Prominence Glare, as well as uh, Star Raiders with a Blaster Joker focus. So those are like the new decks and how they kind of like match in there. So you can see here that like Abyss is still super tier one because it directly counters stuff like Brawlers. Duos are still very strong as we've seen from the Zero Championship. Gets kind of annoying. Uh, I'm actually playing this up here for I'm not really sure why. And then a bunch of other stuff is basically tier three. Like even the new clan events I think are in here which is I think deserve to kind of go up a bit after the buffs but you know a lot of stuff is just kind of here just sort of like sprinkled around like it's a very fat tier three and yeah they just kind of go on with it so yeah that's the JP list now let's take a look at my own all right we're in this familiar battlefield once again let's clean up some of the easy ones right Tokiomi always highly competitive in tournaments in the ladder not so much it's not very efficient for climbing but otherwise yeah um MLB is very interesting MLB is suddenly like after the buffs it got like if you don't know Wingle Brave went back to original skill and also Exiv got well not Exiv um the Exculpate got buffed where now it rides the blaster blade a stand after it battles so you actually get four attacks to the face which is really strong for a finisher in a deck like MLB and so because of that this deck is everywhere like I don't know if the deck is still that great like I don't lose to it that much but at the same time it's just super popular all of a sudden so I think once the buffs come you know for you guys in global that are watching this when set 21 comes out you can ignore these like buff segments because they might not be there yet I don't know when they're going to drop them, but if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I do want to give you that kind of info because it's it's kind of funny how the buffs have impacted things. Battle Sisters, Silver... Silver Thorns, I think, kind of like also are... I don't know, it feels still pretty highly competitive, but somehow it's just... You don't see it anywhere. It like literally died out. Like I don't see Silver Thorns anywhere on JP anymore. Like I think on Global, I still see like some streamers put, like run into the deck, but I don't know, man. This deck, it feels still pretty good even after the nerfs, but doesn't seem to come up that much uh battle sisters themselves are like also you know if you put in the effort they're okay but honestly like it's basically because you can run nine stands that's like the main strength of this deck d robo's also kind of got a buff um basically Dayusha now goes to soul instead of banishing itself for that like one skill where it used to banish itself um which is nice for that like nine crit Dayusha build that you like just kind of turbo with it's cool but all you do is like give yourself early limit break or cross ride on the great Dayusha. oh no you don't give yourself early limit break sorry give yourself early cross ride 
but you don't have limb break removers in the game yet which makes that kind of like not as great i guess i don't know like it's fine it's fine but for the time being it's still like pretty high for less return um blouse are s also quite up here like they do top in tournaments here and there and i think it's just because they have such a ridiculous pop off and such an amazing high roll you know when you go fx blau but otherwise the deck just feels like worse than all the others when you don't get that kind of pop off and that kind of high roll so i think like that's always been the case with this deck right like you have to be willing to accept that if you don't get the high roll you will be sad right you're just gonna be in pain um so i think it's it's kind of up here put in the effort and then experience high roll or don't uh soul i think it's kind of the same it kind of died out after the first set of legion to be honest like you don't really see it i'm gonna be honest with you you don't really see soul anymore you don't see glendios anymore either which is very odd like there's I, I, no actually it makes sense because of course there's like what four link joker archetypes in this set so of course you know people are playing all kinds of things for link joker and glendios like the world line engine is used but glendios itself not that many people use it i've heard some people write about how like they still win and like they play like the zero damage glendios and they just like don't let their opponent do anything while they lock up their field right yes that's great but at the same time like if i don't see a deck i don't feel justified to make a argument about it so in my eyes it's been very underrepresented no so uh not no so uh i have two seeker variants here just like i have two like liberator variants here and let me talk about that right this one is with thingsaver the other one is without thingsaver this one is garmore based and i want to just like bring it up for argument's sake it doesn't really show up as much but i want to bring it up for argument's sake this one is pure bluish so thingsaver uh seekers i think honestly like if best decks is supposed to be like the, the best decks, the tier one stuff, it doesn't really fit in there anymore. I think the deck is way too honest and way too fair. The only unfair thing the deck has is Gansalot and like, you know, it's it's good. Gansalot is great, you know, Gans, Gans Revolution, etc. But it's basically like a, it's a three attack deck unless you pay CB2. And you have a lot of counter charge in the deck now, which is definitely nice, so you can do that more often, but a lot of it needs to hit. And of course, you stop hitting eventually, and then you become a three attack deck, unless you have two CB, in which case you can use Thing Saver, or you can use Blaster Blades to retire the front rows and then swing with them four times, you know, stuff like that, right? I don't know, it's just... Even with Blaster Blades, it's not a four attack deck, it's just a three attack deck, but one more attack to the face, right? But, I don't know, the deck just feels way more fair than all the, like, the stuff I'm gonna put in here, and so therefore I kind of want to put both of these around here somewhere. This list is basically, doesn't run things safe, where you run, like, four Alfred, four um, of the Wingle, and then you run four Ganslots, and then, like, one thing saver maybe, but it, the focus is not on things saver basically, or, like, you know, just in general, the list is quite different. Yggdrasil as well, I think, is still highly competitive, like, it's still a very strong kind of, like, control deck, it shuts down opponents, and, like, a lot of decks can't recuperate from having their board be answered every single time turn which of course is, is definitely quite valid um but i don't think it can kind of keep up with some of the best decks and it's also borderline deck and borderline decks do lose to some of the best decks in the format right now uh then we go to risers i think risers are still quite have yeah, quite some potential like I, I do run into them here and there um where it's just basically like you know they try to run you down with crits and then they try to like reset their rears and bash you until you die and so it's it's a pretty fair deck as well like these decks are just like they're fair in what they do right they're not trying to cheat right they're, they're not trying to cheat so i think that rise are still pretty decent in what they do but they're very fair compared to everything else here angels i think are also like high effort let's return like if you put in the effort yeah it's fun multi attack combos and stuff like that i personally really enjoy it is it as good as the decks above it no it definitely isn't like you just you have to go through way more hoops to do things that are remotely as scary as what the decks above it do and that's why you know if you put in the effort you'll still win right because of course you know a good player with that with something they've mastered is gonna be better than a player who just plays something for the sake of winning and like doesn't really know as much about it so same for great nature right it's kind of the same right like you put in the effort to know the combos and the sequencing and the card draw and like when to legion to not deck out and all the kind of stuff but it's not going to be as easy to pilot and not going to be as common on the meta as other stuff this deck i really want to put up here i want to really really put this up into highly competitive because you guys in global scared me man so like multi-tech combos and stuff that global players do with tachis is just insane but you got to put in a lot of effort to learn the deck like that and of course in jp we have clan gachas now so you can actually roll for these cards without having to like you know beg to the clan gacha gods to like bless you with it um but i think that like this deck actually is pretty damn scary to be honest like i didn't expect it to be so scary but the multi tech combos are actually pretty good and this deck also got a buff speaking of buffs this thing um i don't know for now it's kind of underrepresented but i still don't see it getting out of struggle straight like now you just like bind an extra card on top of like binding a rear which is fine but like if you don't bind the pg it doesn't really like 
do much necessarily. So for that reason, I feel like this is kind of a little bit of a struggle personally, at least from my way of looking at it, it doesn't feel like it has that much of an impact on the meta. Then uh, let me talk about both bluish lists here, right? So we talk about both uh, the core version and the core, not, not the core, the glare version and the glare less version. So glare, I think, is definitely highly competitive. It's not the best deck because it's basically it's very counter blast heavy so you rely on still running the bbl engine and uh on top of that you also need star rain to give you like free superior calls to proc glare in order to actually like get those guard restricts going and like you only really want to use that guard restrict to like when they're on four or if they have like all their cb down and there are three and you can actually chain it twice to like discard two blue flames to get that plus two crit with the guard restrict so i think this deck is cool because it's gimmicky it has a specific gimmick a lot of people don't respect glory effects and they Therefore, Glare can thrive because people don't respect it, right? They don't keep an extra grade 3 in hand and thus they die, right? You know, I do not control the speed at which players that don't keep spare grade 3s in their hand die. Um, this deck, on the other hand, is way worse now. Why is the old Liberators suddenly way worse? I don't know where to put it, to be honest. I'll put it next to it, but it's definitely way, way, way worse. Uh, like, to the point it's not even played, right? It's not even played, and it's weird to have it in the tier list like this. I don't know, I gotta put it somewhere. But the thing with the non... With, like, the pure... Like, basically the Liberators that you guys play in Global right now, where it's, like, Gamor, Ganslot Zenith, Percival, and Core. the problem with that deck is that Gamor does virtually nothing right now because Gamor doesn't protect you from brawlers which are the best deck Gamor doesn't protect you like it doesn't push enough and zenith doesn't really push enough either against stuff like bermudas Gamor also doesn't really like the only thing it checks is perditions but even then it's just like uh, you know and so like brawlers are really common on the bell ladder doesn't check blaster joker like in general it's just they, they everyone threw out Gamors in this set because they just realized wow this does nothing in the current meta because there's like very little retire outside of like blasters and kagero i guess which like yeah if they're popular enough that's worth it but when brawlers are the number one deck that's a different story, right? And then finally, we have one of the best decks, RPBA. This deck, I, it would have fallen off if it wasn't for Brawlers being meta. The thing that makes Brawlers so strong is that they can attack your basically full field for virtually nothing, and they get power on all their rear guards for each rear guard or each target they hit. So, Revengers can give them less targets by retiring their own rears, like, and even retiring their own intercepts, because they're going to kill your intercept anyway with one one blow, they're going to wipe out your whole field, right, and then still swing it to your face. So, Revengers just clear their own board to not give the Brawler player any targets to attack into. And that's what makes this deck so good in this meta, is that you don't give the opponent targets to hit, therefore, you beat them, right? Because their power is so low, and, like, their boosters aren't that great, and they rely on those effects to power up, that... They just don't hit you as much like they li you literally take less damage because you clear your own board as weird as that is to think about right so that's just kind of why revenges are one of the best decks which is i have some high expectations right now not gonna lie which is getting the buff it's everywhere on ladder, just like MLB. Just like MLB, this thing is all over the place in ladder. You run into it so much. Everyone is trying to panyarara you left and right. And I feel like for that reason, this deck is really not too bad. So I think that like the buff to the witches, especially her, not being on Legion anymore, being an act skill, less of a cost, all that stuff, is way better now. Like, you're still a deck that just clears intercepts and bashes face with, like, lower Vanguard power and all that stuff, and now you just do it better. You just do it better. It was never, like, a bad concept to begin with, but now you can do it so much easier and so much more consistently, too. So I think that, therefore, this deck is... Honestly, it, in my eyes, at least, this feels like it, sh it, it deserves to be bumped up. Then... This is Sinbuster. I think Sinbuster Pure really isn't played that much, but from my perspective as someone that does run this deck sometimes still, I think it's still quite good. I think it's still quite good. Maybe we'll put it down here as much as it pains me, but the deck is still pretty decent because it has a lot of draw power, has guard restrict, but of course you have a deck that, you know, has guard restrict and a lot of plusing power as well. So yeah, doesn't do it as good as Galair does, but at the same time, it's still a pretty decent deck. Astaroth, borderline non-existent on ladder to be honest but if i was to rank it somewhere i would probably put it here like you still have to put in some effort with it not that much though um but it's still a pretty strong deck i'd say it's still a pretty strong deck because people don't respect it just like glory effects um because it's still like the rebirth of ragey that people don't really see coming but 
it's honestly underrepresented. This doesn't show up in ladders. Same for Pale Moon. Even after the buff, nobody's really playing Pale Moon in general. Like whether it's like Silver Thorns or this. Like I think again, if I had to rank this, maybe here now that they got the buff. But even then, it still feels a little bit bad. So maybe it's like up in here. So yeah, like this at least I still run into sometimes. But these decks really don't come up that much. Kind of same goes for Neo Nectar. Just doesn't really show up much and. You don't see it much on ladder, really doesn't like, and when it does come up, it doesn't feel that great because it's still a three attack deck. It doesn't really have like multi attacks or like combos and like spear calling and all that kind of stuff mid battle that would help it be better. So, therefore, I think it's if I had to rank it, it'd be like somewhere, maybe even here to be honest. Like, Neon Actor Sally doesn't feel that great. Uh, then we have Witches. I think this is actually a pretty decent deck. Like, I did deck and fight on this like a month ago or something, and I think the deck is still like I wouldn't say it's like top of the top, but we actually saw like an interesting like uh, Yggdrasil Witch high hybrid actually go very like it made it to top 16 right of the zero championship so i think it's actually pretty good like i think even the pure build is pretty fun to play it's just quite cowboss gated and you don't have any counter charge so i think for that reason it's kind of like that's the weak part of it i would say then nemuel definitely one of the best decks this is duos are very annoying duos are very annoying to play against because they just find they find one pg they will find three they'll go to four like easily then they pg all them away they have one in hand they literally just legion them back you know bounce the one they have search the other two out and it's just an endless tale of pg forever until they run out of resources this deck is really annoying to play against like it's very good but it's just really annoying that's that's all i'm gonna really say about it aqua force <sighs> you come up here and there but honestly <sighs> it's it's it can still win in the right hands kind of like I'll, I'll put it here it's not completely a struggle it still has a lot of attacks of course it's always going to be strong but man oh man does this one hurt man oh man does this one it just doesn't feel as good as it should be uh then we have murakumo i think it's also kind of struggling they do have the strong part that they can attack like what four times because they can attack from the back row now and stuff but even then the deck doesn't really do much more beyond that and it's very like you know it's very fragile in that sense too and so i think for that reason it's definitely down there in the struggle street spikes are quite good though spikes definitely require a lot of effort to master i would definitely say that but they do feel quite strong because the combo they do with the break red is still very strong who would have thought right i talked about this last time i think too so i think for that reason that this is still you know it's it requires a lot of effort but it can definitely win and in the right hands it will definitely be very very strong and scary and i want to learn this deck now too going into this set too now then let's get on to the actual new stuff you know outside of the few things we've talked about so far uh first things first dark zodiac dark zodiac Zodiac I made a video on so this is specifically Dark Zodiac based like not just like splashing it but a deck based around Dark Zodiac I think this deck is pretty good I honestly I have a very ridiculously high win streak with this deck because nobody really respects it it doesn't have anything too flashy right it doesn't have like giga crit or like restand or like you know those kind of things all it does is break ride lock stuff up and then Omega lock it, and just your opponents feel the stun for two turns, and you win because they can't do anything. Like, it's literally that kind of deck. It is fragile, and I think if you get aggroed enough, you will lose, but most people don't know what this, that this deck even exists, and so therefore they just kind of die to it. I think you guys don't sleep on it. It's very fun. It's definitely very fun. Um, but I think it does require some effort. Maybe, I don't know if I want to put in highly competitive. I feel like it is, to be honest. I feel like it is up here, but it's just super slept on. I, I don't see many people playing it. That's kind of surprising to me. Uh, then Jewel Knights. I think Jewel Knights are highly competitive. Like, Jewel Knights right now have... The way that a lot of Japanese people are putting it is this is a deck that has like a terrible late game like all it does in late game is gain a crit right but it has a very powerful early game and now you have the gimmick of like Altgaro and the new starter that gives like Altgaro can superior call mid battle from deck like you can call grade one jewel knights and then the starter can give them 3k so if you call like a 10k attacker it becomes 13 and if you keep the booster up you can actually like swing for a decent number and stuff like that so i think it's quite decent it's quite decent but just keep in mind like you really need to make use of that strong early game and then just like don't let things go to the late game too much because most decks will most decks will eat you alive and that's just how it is but jewel knights are definitely very cool look forward to deck and fight of them as well predictions oh this one 
I don't know, man. This deck feels unbeatable. Like, not unbeatable, but it's so solid in every way possible. I think, like, whether it's pure perditions or whether you're playing them with Nouvelle, the deck just feels so good. Like, it, you have a very clear path of, like, you want to go into the Great first to farm some cards and filter through your deck, and then you go into Vortex Dragon Nude when you want to finish them off, blow up their board, take out their intercepts, deal them with damage. You have the Great Ones that power them up for every retire you do and stuff like that, and you just have a very, very consistent game plan that is very easy to execute and it feels very good when you do it too so i think for that reason perditions are easily one of the top decks and that goes without saying for me like this deck is just really really strong but above all else brawlers i think are the best because Kalmas one to put one card in the soul to and then draw one and then attack your opponent's whole board is very good and when your whole you know your other attacker is like 30k plus you know from having hit everything on the board it's very strong that being said good players know how to shut this deck down and it's not just like revengers either like a lot of good players know how to shut it down and we've seen it in the zero championship summer like i really recommend you guys re like watch that one if you haven't because especially in the finals you get to learn how to counterplay this deck and that's like super cool information that you will need when you go into this set brawlers are just by far the best like brawlers are like by far the best on an unexperienced player scale i think once people know how to play against it it probably goes down to here or something but on an unexperienced player scale which a lot of people on ladder are let's let's face it they don't you know spend the time like looking up tech and like learning matchups and stuff then this deck is super threatening but if not then i think this is probably the best deck in the meta if not nemuel like these four decks are actually quite close together then all the other starvators and like blaster joke in particular i think popularity wise it kind of deserves to sit up here i think maybe we can balance things up like this otherwise it would be at the top of highly competitive but highly competitive is also already like super packed so i don't want to like overpack it but this is definitely like a little bit lower than these four like this deck blaster joker is strong because it can lock your opponent's stuff regardless if they have resists or like anything it locked the whole board and the condition isn't that hard to approach either and some people forget to like have a backup legion in their hand so when their like legion mate gets retired they just sit there on a vanilla vanguard for a few turns and so the deck is quite strong actually like i really didn't expect that because it was not that good in the tcg when it came out and it probably won't be that good going forward as well into g but it's right now like in this pretty long meta for set 21 it feels quite good so i think for this meta specifically at least it is quite good and boy i'm gonna have to really think about how i'm gonna balance these out once we go to g because there's so many decks now that i look at this then deleters i think deleters honestly like probably the the starvator-esque variant with like infinite zeros and stuff is probably up here and but i see a lot of the vanilla like not vanilla the pure version also get quite a lot of success so i don't know like it's kind of up here i would say the deck is strong and it can rush you down but at the same time once your opponent has double intercept and you don't have the locker you're not doing much you're literally not doing much all you're doing is like drawing cards and hoping to draw into that locker or if you don't have the count blast for the delete it's just really awkward but it's still a very strong deck regardless like it's a strong deck that has a very powerful like potential turn uh when you do delete them especially early game where you just like rush them rush them rush them and then you know you lock up both front rows and like the pop-off is insane but it's i wouldn't say it's one of the best decks out there uh then mega colony this is from the new clan event got some pretty cool support is quite annoying to play against and is fairly popular i think it's like somewhere around like here put in the effort i think mega colony is gonna destroy a lot of people like mega colony beats people that don't know what to do against it but at the same time it is not as unfair as other decks i would say because you have very easy ways to counteract what it does like the leaders i think are way more punishing to play against than mega colony is but it's got some strong supports i think it's worth to put it up there grand blue i don't know I want to put like here to be honest because this deck feels really good especially after Captain Nightmares got buffed to 9k base now it's like they have very consistent multi-attack they have like really strong boards as well like with double intercept all the time that like a lot of road decks just really really struggle against and so I think the deck is really not too bad I could see this going up in the future and so I can't wait to see how Night Rose will be in uh, zero in G as well but yeah I think that this is more or less how I feel about the tier list this time you know for this set obviously there's stuff like chaos that hasn't really shown up as much yet but and i hope it does but it really has been the other link joker variant so far and like the darks not dark zodiac the venom dancer is also being used as a splash and stuff like this um and stuff like this i guess and not so much as like its own deck for the time being or at least the deck itself i just i don't feel like talking about another link joker variant i guess that's let's be honest here so yeah 
that's basically the tier list. I think it's one of the longer ones we've done because there's just so much to talk about. And it's the last set of Legion, so I really want to, like, you know, give all these decks a lot of time because there's a chance going into the next set I'm going to just be picking up basically the stuff here and, like, these top two brackets and not looking so much at the other stuff because we'll be really focusing on the stuff in G and how that compares to everything in the game. But, yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you guys like this. If you agree, you know, let me know. If you disagree, also let me know in the comments. You know, I try to read them and respond to them as much as i can if you like the video please do leave a like and if you haven't already please do subscribe as well to the channel because it helps a lot but anyway that's gonna be it for me today thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye